So our next speaker, Dr. Justin Chi, is well known to all of you. But I'm not going to let that stop me from giving him the introduction that he deserves. Dr. Chi started his career in dentistry <laughs> as a technician. He went to the program at LSU, really one of the very best dental technician programs in the US. And then he became a CDT, and he worked in the lab industry for a few years. And then for some reason that he never actually fully explained to me, he decided to go to dental school. So he attended USC, and then right after graduation, he joined us here as the Director of Clinical Technologies. You all know how important Dr. Chi is to the development of the fast mill, the hardware, the software, the materials. And most importantly, the training and education that makes you successful with those products. He's been absolutely instrumental all the way through. And from a personal point of view, I've worked with him every day for seven years, and he's every bit as nice as he seems to be. <laughs> so uh, I'm delighted to turn this over to Dr. Justin Chi. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to kick it off. What your mill can do, not just mine, but yours. I love the quote by Arthur Clarke, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from, from magic. And I feel that way a lot of the times whenever I make restorations with this incredible technology, amazing materials that were developed right here. And I'm constantly pushing the limits, much like Glidewell pushing and advancing dentistry forward. You are all in possession of this incredible system uh, that can do amazing work for your patients. And I'm gonna show you some examples of that. So we're gonna start off with a seemingly simple case. Patient comes in, doesn't like the space on her upper left first premolar. You can see it's kind of in an edge to edge bite. Take a look from the occlusal. Oh yeah, you have a little bit of food trap, a little open mesial contact. And so we're gonna replace this restoration. And by the way, if you ever remove restorations, any of you do this? Bless the tooth, hope things go well. <laughs> Put a little cross there on the occlusal. I like this approach. You know, I, can, I want the crown to separate toward the buccal and lingual. I've accidentally knocked off adjacent restorations. So by just going from putting a buccal to lingual slot. So we remove the old crown. We're gonna clean up the prep so you can see the elevated margins there. Round in taper diamonds is what I love. So we're gonna drop the margins down equigingival. And you saw that more open mesial contact. So in those instances, it's better to try to drop the margins even further, maybe a little subgingival to improve on the emergence profile of those restorations. So improve prep. We go through the design process. I decided on obsidian here. Great aesthetics, went through the staining glaze process. I improved the patient's bite, got her out of that edge to edge or cross bite situation. Nice anatomy, good buckle cusp. Patient doesn't like it. <laughs> she hates it. She says, why is there that space? That's the space I wanted to get rid of. So what's amazing is in the system, especially when you come forward, I know there's this kind of fear coming forward into the aesthetic zone. What are my crowns gonna look like? Will my patients like it? This patient didn't like it. So what I did was just go back in the software and utilize the freeform function, right? Drop that mesial marginal ridge, even though it's not actually really anatomically correct. So this is what we did. Bring that mesial marginal ridge down and reduce the gap, reduce that space. And so even when the software provides you, because the AI is written to create something that is anatomically correct for that situation, it may not always be correct for every situation. So just something to keep in consideration. Uh, you have the tools at your disposal and make sure that your vision aligns with what your patient is expecting. This patient here, crack tooth syndrome, pain upon biting, pressure sensitivity, so you can see the class one amalgam. We're always gonna first remove the existing restoration. There was a fracture from mesial to distal. For these restorations, 
I like to do a full coverage, but still always try to take a conservative approach. Uh, what a lot of clinicians get incorrect is creating the rounded internal line angle. So what I'm showing is this transition. If you're dropping the cusps buckle lingually, ensuring that the transition is rounded. So just ensuring that it's easier to manufacture and for the system to manufacture that restoration. So here I utilize camouflage. It's an overlay. Full coverage, you can see along the margins, ensuring that is nice and smooth. And we seat that camouflage restoration down and bond that in really well. And I think that's an incredible approach. You want to make sure that you also, with this material, have at least one and a half to two millimeters of clearance so that the final thickness is at least one to one and a half. And then good bonding protocol, full coverage, uh, will improve the situation. And this is Rob, by the way, who <laughs> gave me the okay to let you know it was him, so you can ask him about the crown. <laughs> Next situation, another situation, pressure sensitivity. A lot of sensitivity upon biting. You can see an existing class one composite. And so removing that, we can see the fracture line go from the distal marginal ridge down through the distal lingual. Another full coverage approach. So we want to try to remove and, and identify where that fracture is as best as we can, but we can't chase it too far down, but still a full coverage approach, and where I can keep the margins elevated, I will. As long as we provide enough clearance, enough space for optimal thickness, keeping things rounded. In the software, you can utilize the cross-section tool, and it'll show you, you can measure, so on the left-hand side, you can see the two icons that are activated, you can measure those two different layers to ensure you have the optimal thickness. And then another overlay restoration, less than 10 minutes we can mill this camouflage and deliver a nice bonded restoration. For these fractured teeth or, or cracked tooth syndrome, when we restore this, I like to just bond a restoration in just for that improved strength. And we can see the final it blends in really, really well. Now, I know many of you, and all of you, are doing crowns, and these overlays are a really good stepping stone toward partial coverage, inlays and onlays. I know many of you have expressed an interest in doing inlays and onlays, but the preparations can be very, very difficult. But the overlays can be a nice transition to that point. So with partial coverage, our speakers later will cover many amazing cases with partial coverage, but I just wanted to throw this in here. Utilizing, if you are going with partial coverage, the guide for how you prepare should always be the DEJ. That will serve as your roadmap and GPS on how far to bring that external outline. Following the DEJ apically to find healthy tooth structure, buccolingually, mesial distally, and that'll define the limits of your external outline. And then just keeping everything internally nice and smooth. The system is amazing at creating these custom puzzle pieces to restore our patient's teeth, allowing us to be conservative. And before you send it to the mill, if you do try these, consider the sprue positioning. The software developers threw in this sprue position tool. You have to run the view nesting first, generate your milling your, or your simulated milled restoration, and then you can reposition the sprue. So think about creating enough space for the sprue as well. If you have a really small preparation, it's very difficult to position the sprue, and also very difficult to handle as well. So you can see a really beautiful result, being conservative, keeping the tooth healthy. For these situations, along the margins, whether it's a partial coverage posterior or veneer in the anterior, utilizing fine grit diamonds. Sometimes we may mismark the margin. Sometimes the margin's a little bit uh, sub or, or beyond the true margin of the tooth. Just blending it in allows for a nice smooth transition. Now I really like these micro sticks from Microbrush. I've tried a few different ones on the market. This one sticks really, really well. So if you are gonna attempt these partial coverage cases, utilizing something to handle and transfer it to the patient's prep, definitely very important. What about hopeless situations? 
I told this patient that he probably needs an implant. Rob uh, came through and uh, <laughs> lots of soft tooth structure, endotreated. Uh, the core came out with his old crown. And you can see from the buckle, there's virtually nothing left, right? You can see I just smoothed things out. I told him, all right, we're going to attempt this. We're going to mill something for you. Uh, when we attempt this, again, just keeping in mind rounded internal. You can see on the software how, how deep down to the apices, not the apices, but the access. You can see about three millimeters in depth. And so we mill this out. You can see that restoration. So it's amazing, you can mill the core with your crown, uh, but you have to follow really good bonding principles. So air abrasion for this material, air abrasion with aluminum oxide, uh, apply a bonding agent, and we bond that in. It's been about a month. <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna last. Still good, still working, and trust me, he is not easy on his teeth, so. Uh, he does have a Bruxer now, opposing that, that we did about five years ago. And so it's still going strong. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll do an update next year. So we'll see. <laughs> Another similar situation, patient came through. She said, three dentists told her she needs an implant. I said, I think you need an implant. But uh, our approach is always, hey, if we can find a margin, we can run it through the system and, and see what happens. So utilizing a laser, so we have the Water Laser I Plus hardened soft tissue laser. Uh, that's some osseous crown lengthening on the lingual because it really is so deep. And once again, we mill out a camouflage restoration, less than 10 minutes, full coverage. We bond it in. Still working well for the patient about four years later. So it's really an incredible approach, uh, improving, and those situations where we're right at the end. Implants are great, but nothing's better than the patient's natural tooth if we can, if there's no real serious periodontal involvement. I'd like to try to restore on that solid tooth structure if we can. Now another situation, this young lady had her anterior bridge from six through 11 replaced several times and unhappy with the aesthetics. So she came for the bridge, but she said, I really don't like my smile. It's my, probably the bridge. And you can see there's a crossbite. Go a little bit closer. And clinical evaluation shows a lot of interproximal decay. If we look at the posterior, uh, so she has existing direct restorations. And so here, we're gonna do partial coverage on the premolars. You can see on three, four, she's missing four or five, and then she has 12 and 13. We're doing partial coverage. And so we do these out of obsidian. So obsidian, each of these mills out in about 12 to 15 minutes. You can see the try-in. So with obsidian, we always try it in, check the fit, and then we run it through the crystallization cycle. But what I did in the software was use the expand and the freeform function and brought the buckle of those posterior restorations out. And so we're able to transform the patient's smile. If we can, if you have the space, if the patient is in crossbite, if you have the room to move the buckle forward, establishing an optimal cus-fos relationship where the maxillary teeth are out, beyond the lowers, it just improves upon the patient's smile. It brightens things up. And so you can see that side view going from this more darker buckle corridor, you can bring that out with a nice wider smile. Again, just all using the tools in the software to create that optimal uh, upper and lower orientation. A nice result. And that's a Bruxer aesthetic bridge there from six through 11 that uh, the lab made for us, a beautiful, beautiful result. So in the anterior zone, many of you have seen veneers that we've made with the system. Here, this patient traumatized number eight, direct composite that was applied to there, a little rough. And so I'm always looking to conserve tooth structure or preserve tooth structure. 
And so I decide to do a veneer, partial coverage veneer. Veneer is partial coverage, partial, partial veneer. You can see the margins here, make it a little bit more irregular in shape so that it'll blend better with the existing tooth structure. And so we make, uh, you can see in the software, setting the margins in that same position, and we mill out another camouflage. And so here I use, camouflage is available in two translucencies, high and low. This is the low translucency, and we use an A1 shade. So air abrasion, the internal bonding agent, and then I use A1 flowable composite to bond that in. And those margins blend in pretty, pretty nice. Another anterior situation, partial patient, you can see a large cavity there on the distal of number 11. After the carries removal, if we're gonna mill it, we wanna ensure we have really good insertion direction, right? So opening things up, allowing a smooth, direct seat. She actually had something going on on number six as well, so we mill these camouflage restorations, air abrasion bonding agent, and then we can just seat that down and provide a nice partial coverage situation. If we don't have to crown the tooth, it's a great approach to, to do these partial coverage restorations. So you can see the before and after here. A really good blend with camouflage. How about more anterior? So this patient actually had this PFM on, on number nine for 50 years, 50 year old PFM. You can see the margins starting to creep away, exposed tooth structure. And so I like to try to use the materials without staining and glazing if we can. That's kind of the optimal, certainly simplest and most straightforward approach, but he has a lot of color going on. So we take off the old crown. Dr. Bender likes to say the existing cheese. We're gonna clean that off. Uh, the old, maybe recurrent decay and cement. So we're gonna drop those margins down. So if we're gonna mill an anterior, you wanna ensure that again, smooth, rounded internal line angles. So dropping the margins uh, equigingively. Now, from an incisal view with any anterior case, you really wanna make sure that the facial is more lingual. The facial of your prep is more lingual to the facial of the adjacent teeth. We often see in the lab these anterior cases where there's not enough room. Otherwise, your crown will become bulky. So always check that incisal view. And we clean that preparation up. And then we go from this situation and we're gonna make a Bruxer aesthetic for this case. Bruxer aesthetic, and I milled this in a lighter shade intentionally just to show how we can improve on the color. So we apply some color to uh, increase the chroma and then all of the little effects. Uh, for our workshop tomorrow, I'm gonna to show you how I apply the color and how you can enhance any aesthetic case and improve upon uh, the color and, and color blend and matching to the adjacent teeth. Another number nine case. This patient uh, was missing number nine. So orthodontist did a substitution. So that's her number 10 in the central's position, uh, number 11 in the position of 10. And so this is mid-ortho treatment. He wants to, the orthodontist wants to try to drop the soft tissue down. So just to show you where she started, pre-ortho, and then she showed up like this. And so we're gonna try to guide the tooth. I'm, I'm establishing the mesial distal width that I want. So just using direct composite first. And I make it longer because he's telling me he's gonna be able to drop everything down. Well, the soft tissue didn't really go down. Tooth went in, so she's finished ortho, and we're gonna make her a final restoration. So I also reshape her canine 11 to, to look like a lateral. So we prep that down. I take the soft tissue to the same level as number eight uh, with the burr, and we mill out a biotemp restoration. Biotemp is an incredible way. If you're diving into the anterior and you're not quite ready to restore your permanent, maybe same day, take your time. The biotemp is an incredible fitting restoration, can be a long lasting provisional. 
And then we also do an aesthetic, Bruxer aesthetic final for the patient. So we try this in, and just looking at it, it probably would have worked out well without any characterization. Her natural teeth don't have a lot of color to them. But I just wanted to take it to, to see if I can blend it even better. And so again, I'm gonna show you this kit tomorrow and how we can improve and, and create really natural effects on our amazing materials. So pretty good blend for this patient and a great uh, combination case. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number eight. So this patient had an implant placed on number eight. And that was the restoration that uh, her dentist sent her home with. Took off the old restoration. And we weren't actually sure what implant system it was quite yet. So uh, we removed the old restoration and we can first I'm going to make you a provision that looks better. So we scan that in. And anytime you scan an abutment for an implant, uh, fill in the access hole. It'll make it much easier. Otherwise, the mill will mill a little projection into the space. And so we design this and mill out the bow temp. And so it's already looking better. A uh, patient comes back, we figured out it's a Strawman implant, matches our inclusive system, so we were able to use our inclusive components, and we have an open tray impression coping, and the lab, we request from the lab a custom abutment in zirconia. And what the lab can do for you, you can request the core file for that abutment, and then import it into the design software, and then you can mark your margins, and generate your, your uh, restoration. Now, because of the soft tissue loss, apically, I wanted to build out and try to stain the soft tissue on the final restoration. So you can see how it's more bulky at the gingiva. So I'm just using free form and the add functions to bulk that out. I get the general shape and then bump that out to where it's kind of even with the adjacent soft tissue and we mill out an obsidian restoration. Just use a burr to kind of create a little bit of that gingival margin. And we crystallize it. Runs through the crystallization cycle, about 25 minutes. And then here I decided there's a, from the Jensen Dental, this Mio system has a pink stain. And so this is the result that we got. This is my first attempt at it. I thought it was okay. And I'm just looking at the photos, just matching getting the purples and the pinks and different hues to try to blend in. And so this patient's able to smile much bigger, more confidently uh, with this result. This is all with obsidian. So anteriors, you might be thinking anteriors are great, but maybe the design is still very challenging. Well, this is a preview of what our developers are working on. This will be in the next update. That's supposed to be an IO on number nine or eight just to demonstrate the accuracy of this mirroring function. So much like the pretreatment, you can choose the tooth you want to copy and mirror. So that's the selection around the, the uh, gingival margin there. Did this freeze? Oh no, it's actually still thinking. So there's the mirrored design. So it will flip over to the preparation and you can set the position of the tooth. So if you need to move it more mesially, which he's demonstrating here, and then it repositions. But you can use all the same tools once it generates the proposal, uh, improving on the design, improving on the position. And so this will make anteriors, single unit anteriors, or even multiples much easier. If you have one side established and you like the anatomy, uh, you can very easily copy that over and flip it. All right, this patient came in, seven through 10. We're planning to place an implant at site number nine. And this was when we were testing a zirconia implant, so we dropped that down. But while the surgery was occurring, we were milling a biotemp bridge. 
So if any of you are performing surgeries and the adjacent teeth just so happen to also need restorations, uh, this can serve as a great long-term provisional. Biotemps are indicated for a year, uh, and it, it lasts, it, it can help protect the site extremely, extremely well. You can see the design here. So we scan that in pre-surgery, and it takes about 20, 25 minutes for this biotemp bridge to mill. So you can see that seat's right down. Now in the anterior zone, what you may need to do post-mill is maybe use a, a disc, a diamond disc, to just create a little bit more sharper interproximal areas, just kind of sharpen those embrasures to individualize the teeth. But that's a great approach with bio temps. And then after the four months of healing, we uncover. And I was a little worried I dropped the tissue too far down apically, but that's the uh, temp cylinder. And we now scan that again and mill a provisional, four individual provisionals. And the goal is to shape the tissue. So you can see how it, the mill is able to create a really great rounded profile to that restoration. And now we seat that down and let the patient come back in a couple of weeks. You can see the really nice contour. Biotemps is so incredibly smooth, it's a perfect fit. It allows the tissue to heal over that site. And with this system, they only had uh, conventional impression copings. So open tray, uh, the lab fabricates or, or uses their zirconia uh, permanent abutment, and then we just scan that in and design four individual Bruxer aesthetic restorations. Now, my plan is to turn this into a screw retained crown. So, we want to bond that to the base, and this is the approach the lab uses to make a screw retained crown. So, we air braid the zirconia abutment, we air braid the zirconia crown, apply bonding agent. In this case, we're using Scotch Bond Universal on both the abutment and the crown and then utilizing uh, 3M's Reliax Ultimate, their adhesive resin cement to lock that in. And then we have our customized Cheriside SRC. But before, his adjacent teeth are a little bit darker, so we did apply some A and B stain to enhance the uh, aesthetics and characterization. So what is currently a little challenging in the software is the abutments are really small and rounded, right, with implants. So you have to use the freeform function to generate the emergence profile that you want to create that illusion that it's a natural tooth. Well, this is coming. Screw retained block. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but it exists. It's currently gone through testing. Uh, the software team developing the software, adding in the functionality to design. You can see that's your retain outline, the block outline. And so you would essentially generate your design the same way. And the software is going to calculate the optimal position within the block. It will contain the tie base. It has the screw channel access to simplify your screw retain chair side restoration. So you don't have to bond uh, the, the restoration in. So that's coming at some point. Not sure when, some point. So the Biotemps now bridge block could also be used to make splinted crowns. So it doesn't have to be a bridge. You don't need to have an indigenous site. So I like this for now some of the larger cases if I don't want to do an individual uh, Biotemp for each. So this is a full lower aesthetic case. You can see five units on each side. And the request has been made. The developers didn't know anyone would want to do this. Uh, but being able to convert this design to individual crowns is the next evolution of this process. So we can look forward to that as well. Now, veneers. This is an interesting case. A uh, patient had a lot of interproximate de decay, a lot of attrition. And so I wanted to improve on her smile. And take an approach that doesn't require any characterization. So we have more units, enough units to do that. And so what makes this interesting is these are sandblasted Bruxer aesthetic veneers. They're not even polished. I'm just curious what it would look like. So we drop those in, we bond them in, and with nature's polish, you can see it actually looks pretty darn good. 
It blends really well. Now the system is very capable of doing these veneers, but uh, the, the software wasn't optimized originally. So I set the indications in the software to crowns. And you can see over the premolars what sometimes happen when you choose crown, it doesn't see a crown prep. It leaves these sort of flashes and wings, these extensions on the occlusal. Uh, but this is again, Bruxer aesthetic. And it's very, very easy. It's not ideal, but it's easy to remove the excess. And I'll show you this tomorrow. I'll demonstrate how durable the material is. You can modify the margins down to fit precisely where they need to go. Now, if you're doing veneers, uh, the optimal veneer preparation is the butt joint at the lingual, incisal lingual junction. Uh, we prefer not to wrap around to the lingual. So just a flat incisal edge with a slight, slight slope from lingual down to the facial. It's gonna be much easier for the system uh, to create an anterior veneer. And see the improvement to the patient's smile. Maybe the world's first sandblasted anterior veneers. All right, this patient came in Lots of recurrent decay to her existing PFMs. She had these done overseas, a lot of splinted PFMs. Uh, almost every tooth was endotreated, and some needed retreats. And so with these aesthetic cases, the planning is very important. And you can see a gummy smile, so we are going to improve upon the gingival contours of the anteriors. And these are all full coverage with PFMs, so a really great way, again, is to use biotemps. And Dr. Manalili will speak to some of the benefits later on how biotemps can trial and ensure that you're moving in the right direction. You're moving with the vision that you have for the patient. So this is essentially full mouth for this patient. A lot of stuff's going on, but the goal is to make these Bruxer aesthetic restorations. And I decided to use bleach white, the whitest shade that we have but we tone it down. So it doesn't matter how light the, the foundation material is, we can always improve on the chroma, the shade, the hue, and allow it for an optimal blend. So it's still in progress. There's a lot more going on. Uh, lower, the lowers are in biotemps at the moment in this photo, and then 12 through 14, that's a biotemp bridge. We're gonna place an implant at site 13. So that's also serving as a nice long-term provisional for this site. But it's amazing the power that we have in our practice. The system can make aesthetic restorations for you. And through these aesthetic cases, the software developers are also learning how to improve on the library and the proposals that the AI is generating. So these types of cases will be even easier for all of you uh, to implement into your practice. Bless you. I'm gonna close with this case here. This patient came in, you can see on the posteriors, it's a few things going on. Uh, all of her posteriors, or pretty much all the posteriors, so number three, four, five, uh, all the upper posteriors, and on the lowers, uh, 30, 18, 19, 20, 21, they're all hopeless. They all have pretty gnarly infections going on. So we remove those teeth after the healing we seat Han implants in these posterior sites. And we like to try to utilize a bridge approach instead of an implant for every tooth. So we're gonna set this up for future Bruxer bridges. So Han implants go in, all guided surgery through Glidewell's DTP department. And that just really makes this approach much more predictable. And so now we get our custom titanium abutment. So after things heal, I don't have the photo of the scan bodies, but we scan this in, request the core files from the laboratory. And so again, these core files are, are really amazing that allow us to import those scans into the design software. And then now with the functionality of the Bruxer bridge, I'm gonna mill Bruxer bridges with the system. As you can see, we designed this and now the design software is even better. When I first designed these, I had to design them individually, 
If you've done bridges in the past, you know it was a little bit more time consuming to get the contacts dialed in, the occlusion dialed in. But now with the bridge AI, my gosh, it just kind of pops into a really, really good position and good occlusal scheme for these fixed partial dentures. As you can see on all of these four sites, we have a single unit on 30, and then three Bruxer bridges that we design all in the software. And so the mill will mill these out. It takes about two hours for the bridge, but it's amazing, amazing how we can get this bridge uh, or these bridges made chair side. Now we are gonna create uh, a bonded profile to our uh, maxillary bridges. So we remove the bridge from the sprue using a fine grit diamond. Of course, we, we're gonna try them in intraorally. So with a bridge, if you're going to create a screw retain approach to those restorations, I recommend bonding them in the mouth because you have two abutments to contend with and there could be a little slight discrepancy. So we just want to dial that in. So we seat those down once we confirm the fit. This is the challenging part. So if you're trying to make a chair size or uh, SRC at the moment, you do have to create your own access channel. So a few burrs later, we have our opening. <laughs> And we want to we want to bond those in so you can see air abrasion. This is our chair side Danville unit, uh, 50 micron aluminum oxide to roughen the intaglio. And then we're going to apply our bonding agent. So bonding agent to the inside of these crowns to the roughen intaglio of the zirconia, and we're going to thin that out. We're going to cure the sites. And so again, we have two abutments that we're wanting to seat this on. So I fully seat the abutments intraorally and fill in the access channels with Teflon and bonding to the titanium abutments. We do aerobrate the abutments too. The lab does it, but we do it again chair side, and then we seat those down using a micro brush to clean out the excess. And then we're gonna pop out the, uh, once things kind of settle, we're gonna pop out the Teflon, and now we're gonna cure things into position. Remove the Teflon, we're gonna remove the bridges. And just in case there is any flash or excess, we're gonna finish those out intra or, or extra orally. And so we just did screw retained crowns on the maxillary. On the mandibular crowns, we used an implant cement, ceramir implant cement to seat those down. Now on the anterior, to improve on the aesthetics, now we're gonna work on, we stabilize the patient's bite now we do full coverage preps on the anteriors and the rest of the teeth. So once again, in the anterior zone, keeping things rounded, nice sharp margins. I typically just bring the margins equigingivally and packing cords. So this is size one cord on each of the anteriors. And by the way, uh, you can see that there are undercuts on a lot of those anteriors. She had class five lesions or abfractions on the facial. You, of course, can fill those in and do a buildup, but as long as your margin lies beyond the middle of the tooth, you're okay. And I know the software is gonna scream at you that you have an undercut warning. Uh, it's, it's just a warning, it's, it's sensitive, but as long as, when you look from the incisal or occlusal, as long as you can visualize your margin outside of the middle of the prep, you're, you're in good shape. And so these are Bruxer uh, aesthetic that we milled out shade A1, so without any surface characterization. This is our approach. So we can improve aesthetics. It's not all about the color. It's all about proper contour, proper emergence profile, proper anatomy. That will dictate the aesthetics of the restorations. And so establishing good function, good function, good position, good anatomy. That's what we're after. So minimal, even minimal polish, so a really nice, improvement for our patient here. And so I hope through these cases, you're able to see some of the possibilities with your system. If there's anything like this that you want to attempt for yourself, please let us know, we're here to help. Uh, thank you all so much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the IOX.